as part of all of this Christmas stuff that they do, they proclaimed themselves the Christmas capital of Texas. Hello, I'm Jackson Bird, and it is day four of Vlogmas, and I don't really have anything going on today. Nothing really exciting happening, just catching up on a lot of work, taking a couple of conference calls. So, since there is nothing exciting to take you along for in my day today, I thought I would just talk a little bit. <laughs> so I recently started following my hometown on Instagram, and it has reminded me that my hometown is kind of a weird place. It didn't feel that weird growing up, and Honestly, it's not that weird, but there are like certain quirks about it that I feel maybe explain some things about me, or at least are amusing enough to talk about in a video. So I grew up in a town called Grapevine, Texas, which first of all is named after wild grapes and it's vineyards. So I grew up in a town named after vineyards. Grapevine. It sounds a little like a storybook name already. And fun fact, when I was going through like all of my old notebooks from growing up when I was writing my book, I stumbled across some from when I was like five or six where I wrote that my hometown was Great Vine. I must have like misheard what all the adults in my life were saying, so I thought it was Great Vine, not Grape Vine. As in, I live in one of the greatest places ever. I kind of like that. Like, I thought a lot about my new town, Great Vine. But no, it's Grape Vine after the grapes, uh, and so our high school mascot was the Mustang after the Mustang grapes, which is apparently a type of grape. Our mascot was not represented as a bunch of grapes, thankfully. We were actually like a, a horse, the Mustang, and all the rich kids would get Mustang cars on their 16th birthdays. My hometown is also one of four towns in the Dallas-Fort Worth metroplex area that houses the Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport. So a ton of our parents were pilots and flight attendants and generally worked at the airport or for the airlines. And somehow being near the airport also meant that like, there were a lot of people who would move from other places, whether it was across the nation or across the world, and just kind of stay in Grapevine. I don't know, I, I don't know if that was actually connected to the fact that we were like in an international airport hub or what, but it was definitely a thing. So like there are a lot of kind of famous people who maybe were born up north or somewhere else, but actually spent a lot of their childhood in Grapevine, Texas. And some of them were just born there too. So there was like Demi Lovato, Post Malone, Nora Jones, the dude who was spanky in The Little Rascals, apparently. Oh, and Jenna Dewan, also was, uh, she didn't just go to my high school, she was apparently like homecoming queen or something? That was a couple of years before I went there. Also, Demi Lovato was like technically homeschooled and probably lived in LA for most of her teenage years, but apparently lived in Grapevine or Colleyville for a while. And no, I did not go to high school with Post Malone. He went to my high school, but I am much older than Post Malone. So he went there afterwards. And apart from like famous people, we also had a pretty sizable British population. And we had a store in our town called the British Emporium, which would have all the like British candies and groceries and little knickknacks and stuff. They also ran a lot of events. Most notably, when I was in about middle school-ish, they started doing an annual Monty Python festival. Like they would do screenings and sort of like live performances of the most famous sketches at the theater downtown. There would be an argument clinic in the store there'd be a lot of spam and like Vikings and stuff going around everywhere and they even did a silly walk parade down the historic Main Street. Wasn't very well attended, don't know if it still happens anymore, but it definitely happened many times and I did check they did it in recent years. There was even like, they brought John Cleese out a couple years ago and he won some kind of award or something like that? I don't know, it's, uh, it's pretty impressive, but I will say an interesting thing about the area, it wasn't Grapevine specifically, but Dallas, the Dallas-Fort Worth PBS station, which is called KERA, they were actually the ones that brought Monty Python to America. They were the first ones to air Monty Python on American television, and that started Python mania back in the, I don't know, 70s or 80s or whenever that happened. So North Texans love their Monty Python. Now, in addition to the Silly Walk parade on Main Street, there were a lot of better parades. So the Main Street, uh, is part of a historic downtown area. Grapevine's not that old, it was like founded in the 1840s, but that's still older than a lot of towns in the area, and so they were like really cling on to the history of the town, and the main street uh, has all these like historical preservation initiatives or whatever, like any of the stores that open there have to look a certain way so that it all looks like this tourist trap, basically. I mean, it's kind of nice looking, but like, yeah, the tourist industry in the area is pretty big. Oh yeah, speaking of, when I was a kid, they opened this huge mall that had like an ice rink and a skate park and a, one of the biggest movie theaters in the nation or something like that. And so that upped tourism when I was a kid. And then when I was in middle school, they opened a resort 
a Gaylord Opryland resort that's this huge massive thing right on the lake. Oh yeah, there's a lake that also brings a lot of tourists there uh, and is a big attraction. And when that resort opened a couple years later, a competitor opened across the highway called the Great Wolf Lodge. Both of these are like chains across the nation. And so the tourism industry like really amped up when I was in middle school, high school. And the town has just really leaned into that in the last 15 or so years. And one of the biggest ways that they do that is with all the stuff that they already had going on in the historic downtown area. One of the things in the downtown area is a steam engine. It's called the Tarantula Train and it's actually, I think can maybe be used by commuters if they don't care about having tourists around them, but it's mostly a tourist thing and it goes in between Grapevine and Fort Worth. And so you get to like go on a little ride and they do all the things that they, they do at like out west with like Grand Canyon trains where there's like robber barons on horses going along the train that then like get on the train and it's a big hold up kind of thing. It's very hokey, but they dress the train up for a lot of other occasions. There's always like a Thomas the Tank Engine day or something, and then they also turn it into the Polar Express at Christmas and have a little thing for the kids. And I just saw on Instagram last night that they were doing like a wine train, which makes sense. Again, the town is named after wine. I don't exactly know what was happening, but I guess you got to take a ride on the train to go to the Fort Worth stockyards and the whole time you got to sample a bunch of wine. Apart from the train, there's other things that are always happening. Um, at the start of the summer, there's a big festival called Main Street Days, which is like your typical street festival, but also like a fair with rides and live music and all kinds of stuff. And then at the end of the summer, it's called Grape Fest and it's the same thing, but with wine. And you get to stomp grapes and it's all wine themed. I grew up around so much wine. Like there's so many places to go wine tasting, which is like a lot of what my parents always did when I was growing up. In addition to those festivals, there's also a lot of parades that happen down Main Street. But the biggest thing that has started happening it kind of was a little bit when I was growing up, but man, have they leaned into their brand for it now. The Main Street downtown area goes absolutely wild for Christmas. Just after Thanksgiving, there's a big like lighting ceremony of the giant fake tree that they have. Yeah, it's not a real tree because not Rockefeller Center, it's Texas. You know, everyone's wearing shorts while they light the tree. And they've got all kinds of lights and decorations all down Main Street, and there's a big Christmas parade that's like separate from the tree lighting. They've got so many activities nowadays, I don't even know. Those two things happened when I was a kid. As part of all of this Christmas stuff that they do, they proclaimed themselves the Christmas capital of Texas. I think it has since been like awarded to them by someone. And I didn't always love Christmas when I was like a teenager and young adult. I didn't really start loving it again uh, until the most recent years, but like, I love Christmas now. I think you can tell in my Vlogmas videos, uh, it has really been a thing that I lean into and that like my friends know about me. They know that I love Christmas. And so I now find it kind of funny to like look back on and be like, ah oh, yes, well, I was raised in the Christmas capital of Texas. So of course I love Christmas. It's just like in my bones. But if you wanted to see just all of the different things that they're doing these days, I mean, go follow their Instagram, I guess. Go check it out because it kind of blows my mind. This town was like kind of small when we moved there when I was a kid and it just kept expanding and expanding and expanding as I got older. So it's just always kind of mind boggling to me to see all the things that they're doing now, especially with like the Gaylord Resort. It's also just weird to me to see my hometown on Instagram. Social media in that way was not really a thing when I lived there and when I was growing up there. So I don't know, it's, it's, a, it's weird. Does anyone else feel that way? Like, do you have a part of your life that kind of the book closed on before social media or YouTube or anything like that sort of happened, but that thing still exists even if you're not a part of it? and now you see it through the lens of social media and you kind of wonder like, how would this have been presented when this thing was a part of my life? And it's weird to look at in this context now. I don't know, but that's a little bit more about my hometown and upbringing a little bit, I guess. Of course, if you want to read more about Grapevine and its weird traditions, it is talked about a little bit in my book. There was a very pivotal moment of my life that happened at Main Street Days. So of course you can get my book at the link in the description box and hey, makes a great holiday gift, especially for, you know, people in your life that you wish understood trans people a little bit better. But uh, there are many exciting things ahead in Vlogmas. Got our holiday party coming up this weekend. I'm gonna finally get a haircut. That's not super exciting for you maybe, but it's very exciting for me. And then I'm heading out to Boston and DC and gonna go on a whole fun Christmas filled trip. There's plenty more to come. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.